Sure. Welcome to, back to CBS Mornings. We're going to begin with this because we're going to hear from Olympic gymnast and advocate Allie Raceman about her very powerful testimony on Capitol Hill. Now, she testified with three other world champion gymnasts. There was Simone Biles, Michaela Maroney, and Maggie Nichols. They discussed the investigation into sexual abuse by former Team USA Dr. Larry Nasser. This hearing followed a report that found that two FBI field offices, quote, failed to respond to the Nasser allegations with the utmost seriousness and urgency that the allegations deserved and required. Raceman said that one agent diminished her abuse and made her feel like it was not worth pursuing a case. Over the past few years, it has become painfully clear how a survivor's healing is affected by the handling of their abuse. And it disgusts me that we are still fighting for the most basic answers and accountability over six years later. Disgust is the word. FBI Director Christopher Wray testified he has no explanation for the actions of the agents at those two offices. He said the Bureau is taking steps to ensure that this never happens again. Allie Raceman joins us now to discuss. Allie Raceman, first I want to say to you, thank you so much for your testimony yesterday. I have to say it was gut-wrenching, but I think it was something that we all really needed to hear, and I really applaud your bravery for, for sitting there and sharing it with all of us. Second, I want to know what it took for you to prepare for yesterday and how you felt when it was all over. The testimony you said, like serving up uh, young women on a silver pla platter to pedophiles, was very, very difficult. Yeah, thank you for asking that question because I think so many people, you know, they, they may watch it, but they don't really actually realize how much goes into it. And, and for me personally, I spend so much time preparing for the testimony and I, I feel like I overthink every single word. And so it was so draining for me. I actually, right now I kind of feel a little bit like in fight or flight mode. So I think it, I feel a little bit more awake than I thought I would because I feel I don't know if anyone else can uh, relate to this. When you feel so anxious, it's kind of hard to relax and hard to sit still. But mm -hmm. the weeks leading up to preparing for the testimony was so draining and so exhausting. And it affects me physically. Like I have uh, migraines. I am like so tired. My body hurts. I feel like I just finished a training session. And um, yesterday I left feeling more hopeful than I thought I would. I'm obviously really triggered and exhausted, but it seemed that the senators were very validating, so I'm really hoping they're going to be able to help us. Allie, it's great to hear that you're feeling more, more hopeful. We heard from FBI Director uh, Christopher Wray, who said it was inexcusable, the FBI's behavior. He had no explanation and that steps were being taken to make sure it never happens again. Are you aware of what those steps are? Have you heard directly from the FBI? I have not, and, and you know, I think there has been, you know, a, a resignation and, and someone was fired, but it's it's similar with um, USA Gymnastics and USOPC where we don't have explanations and that leaves us to speculate or guesswork. And when we're talking about children being safe and children being spared, the abuse that I and so many others endured, um, we want answers. And so I, I do want to understand what they're doing, but in order for me to believe in a safer future, we need to be looking at the FBI, USA Gymnastics, and USOPC and recognizing that there is an interplay among the three organizations and they all need to be investigated because if there is not a true independent investigation, we can't believe in a safer future. So, um, you know, now I'm, I'm hoping that the senators were, will help us get that rolling because I don't know what else to, to do from, from here. If they're, they're not able to help us, then, um, I don't, I don't know. It needs to happen, in my opinion, though. Mm -hmm. Simone Biles said that she competed in this year's Olympics, so this, this wouldn't be swept under the rug. What did you think about what she said? You know, I, I think that Simone um, is incredible. I'm, I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of Maggie and Michaela. This is so hard for all of us. Um, you know, the last couple of years watching Simone train um, while also navigating the abuse. And for bringing light to the crisis of abuse in amateur sports. You know, listen, we all knew that you all had been let down. I think most of us did not know the extent to how you all, how the FBI and so many adults let you all down. And I'm wondering how you're processing this now. 
Yeah, I think, you know, processing this is is really hard to navigate it. It's um, it's hard, especially when for so long, um, I think all of our abuse was really diminished by people in big positions of power, you know, the FBI, U.S. Olympic Committee and USA Gymnastics making us feel like our abuse wasn't a big deal. And so I think yeah. that for me personally, it's taken a lot of therapy, a lot of time for me to realize what happened to me was bad and what I feel is real and that this is so much bigger than us. And so it's a balance of taking care of myself. And obviously today I feel like um, I, I need to be taking care of myself, but at the same time, we recognize the importance of, um, you know, hopefully things are gonna be moving, but I think that any time that we can talk about it, it hopefully helps push for change. But, you know, I think I keep thinking about all of the, young survivors out there um, and even just survivors that are adults and just the message that is being sent by the FBI, mm -hmm. in my opinion, it's just, it's horrific. You know, it's like it's if our experience you know, is public, it's, um, it Kelly, makes talk, it's Talking about it is so important. And I'm wondering, did you all ever talk to each other about it? It happened to so many young women. Did you all ever talk amongst yourselves or did you all just think we're the only ones this is happening to? You know, I can recall talking about um, some of our experiences with each other, but because there was not a lot of conversation around what sexual abuse or sexual assault was, in my mind, mm. if I would ever have conversations with my teammates, uh, you know, it never occurred to me that it was actual sexual abuse. I, I recognized that this wasn't right, but I didn't know what it was, and I recognized I was mm. uncomfortable, but at the same time, I thought, He's a doctor, so I feel guilty now for distrusting a doctor. Who am I to say that yeah. what he's doing isn't right? And and honestly, it was so normalized in the most horrific way where when, you know, Nasser was abusing me, he was abusing so many of my teammates that I thought, okay, he it seems he's been doing this for decades. So if it wasn't right, someone would have said something a long time ago. So I'm the problem. I I'm wrong for questioning him. And that's something that I think a lot yeah. of survivors do yeah. is we distrust how we feel. Ali, on the subject of, of survivors, you have a documentary coming out on Lifetime in which you spoke to a number of survivors, not only in the world of gymnastics, as I understand it. What did you learn from them? It was, you know, um, working on the Darkness to Light documentary, um, it's a three-hour special with Lifetime that actually airs on um, Friday, September 24th. It was, it was just um, a really incredible experience it was obviously um so many things mixed in one where it's empowering but it's also devastating to hear survivors experiences and something that i learned from the lifetime show but also even from yesterday being with my friends and my teammates is the power of community and it's so special to be able to connect with survivors that i've never met before that we have this special unspoken bond where i feel like we can finish each other's sentences they helped me feel valid, validated. They helped me feel less alone. And so I, I can only hope that they felt that same thing for me. But it was a, a really beautiful experience. And I'm so grateful for their time and for the survivors sharing their stories. And I hope that it helps someone out there. I, I know it will help someone out there, Allie Raceman. Again, we thank you. Thank you for talking yesterday. It's so personal and so private and so painful. Mm -hmm. And yet you're with us again this morning. Really, we thank you so much. Thank I hope you for you're your strength. Be okay. Nate's right. Thank we you thank so you much. for your strength.